Hello, everyone. I am back. We have another interview and we have Elena from The Nest here and I'm so excited we're here. We actually just saw each other in person just a couple weekends ago. So it was so great to connect with you there. And now we get to connect virtually again and chat even more. Tell us about your business. Tell us about The Nest. Thank you. I honestly thank you so much for having me and I've so much enjoyed loving um, meeting you guys and, and being welcomed into the community. So I am a new practice. I'm a lactation consultant. I started out years and years ago back in 2007 as a doula um, and sleep consultant. But now my passion has always been for just helping moms gain the confidence they need to succeed and any choice they make, whether it be breastfeeding or bottle feeding, whatever they decide is best for them. Um, so that's kind of what I, I built the nest to be. So it's not necessarily, we don't discriminate. You don't have to be breastfeeding to come and see us for help. You can be doing whatever it is, whatever, you, however you feed your baby is your choice. Our job is to help you figure out how to make it work for you and feel confident in doing that. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Yeah. It's it's all about navigating, you know, whatever, whatever way you go, you know, it's a choose your own adventure book, right? You know, exactly. so you write your own story and navigate your own way through, through this, you know, season of, of new parenthood and postpartum and all of the highs and all of the lows. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. There's already so much to worry about that. What you feed your baby, it, we, we just add so much pressure onto moms these days that my my goal is to lift some of that instead of add more yeah amazing yeah. amazing so let's touch a little bit more on what specific services that you offer because i know that you've got quite a few underneath yeah. umbrella <laughs> so let's touch on each one of those and, and what you specifically offer sure so mainly i start with um, breastfeeding consultations or formula feeding consultations so sometimes breastfeeding is not possible or uh, for whatever reason mom is not interested in breastfeeding there's lots of reasons why that might happen um, so I offer a feeding consultation so whether it's um, immediately after the baby or find after a few weeks you're just struggling and you're not sure how much your baby be eating baby's all of a sudden spitting up all the time um, so I sit with moms and I, I give them a one-on-one -on -one, um, in-depth consultation whatever whatever feeding method they're using and we go through that and, and the best ways for it. I do specialize in infant tongue and lip ties um, and identifying those because those can have a huge impact on uh, breastfeeding success. So if you're feeling like I just can't, my baby won't stay on the breast and my friend says it takes her 10 minutes to feed her baby, but my baby takes an hour and they never stay on and it hurts. And I don't understand why. Um, I can assess the baby for those tongue and lip ties and, and it can make a massive difference. Um, I do offer prenatal services. Uh, unfortunately, right now we're working on it, but OHIP won't cover those quite yet. Um, but we are working on it night, night and day tirelessly. Um, we've just announced OHIP coverage for our uh, breastfeeding and formula feeding consultations. So we're very excited about that. Um, and also, we're, we're working on introducing um, like an intro to solids course and a basic sleep consultation. Um, I don't go too much into detail and, and unfortunately we're not in a position to be able to have somebody come and stay at the house overnight. Like I know some services in the area have, which are wonderful. Um, but for now, we just kind of do a, a little sit down one-on-one -on -one and go through a, a plan that works best for it, the mom. Um, and baby that we're actually discussing about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just those little tips and tricks that, you yeah. know, that little tweak that needs to be done that just, you know, change up the routine or change up that little thing. And it's just like, oh, magic, right? Magic, that's right. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I love it. So let's talk a little bit more about your background. Um, we touched on the fact that you were a doula and that you've got the sleep consultant, but let's dive a little bit deeper. Tell me your story, your background, and, and how you kind of came to this place. Yeah, so I've, I've kind of always, ever since I can remember, even before, like preteen years, I've always had a passion for babies and children and um, people who've known me since I was a kid can tell you, oh my gosh, I don't know why you weren't doing this. <laughs> um, so it, that's kind of how it all started. And then my, it actually, my mom became a doula and she said, you know what, 
I think you'd be better at this than I am. And like I was about 17 or 18 when I got certified to be a, a doula and then started with that. Um, and then, of course, I went on to have my own children and um, I, I slowed down a little bit, but I still continue to offer private services along the way. Um, and then after I had my first baby, I'll say breastfeeding was night and day. Even though I knew everything I knew before I even had kids, that when it's your own baby, it's like it, you forget everything and it all goes out the window, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I had such a hard time breastfeeding. I ended up pumping and exclusively bottle feeding. Um, and then I, I just realized, oh my gosh, there's not enough help out there for moms. And that's when I started really focusing on helping moms breastfeed. Um, so I, I was at that stage where I was still having kids. I went on and had two more kids. And so it was sort of slow for me and I was doing little bits at a time. Um, and then when COVID hit, I decided to, you know what, I'm just going to dive in deep. And I, I went to go get my IBCLC designation and take the extra courses. I went on to get certified for tongue and lip ties and a bunch of other stuff because I had the time. Um, and then I started working at a local uh, clinic that also specializes in tongue and lip ties. And this experience there was um, amazing. It was fantastic. And then I, I realized the gap in the service just because the OHIP covered clinics usually are very uh, busy and overbooked. So moms typically get, you know, 10 minutes and they're sharing that 10 minutes with other moms because each room is full with a mom. Um, so my, my goal was to offer an OHIP covered service, but that still gives mom that focus and time that she needs to even be able to tell her story before I can help. So if I don't know the whole story, it's hard to really give a, a good, honest, true um, opinion of what I think could help them. So that's kind of how I all I started. And then the nest became this vision of mine that I was like, oh my gosh, this is what every city needs. Every region needs somebody who can take the time and, and focus on these moms and give them the attention and, and um, love that they really need to feel because it's such a vulnerable time in their lives. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I feel like with the pandemic there, there became a lot of disconnect um, yeah. between service providers and the, and the moms, just because, you know, things went very virtual there for a long time and there wasn't as many in-person visits. So I'm glad that we're able finally to get back to all of those things and, and, and being there and supporting the moms, you know, in person, because there's nothing like, you know, that one-on-one -on -one connection and, and, you know, attention that you can give um, at that time. So yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I do offer virtual services, but I always recommend to my moms, especially if it's their first visit, mm -hmm. come in because it's very hands-on. It's really difficult mm -hmm. to diagnose an issue and, and even help it through a video call because I can't, I can't really see what's happening. So I definitely say there's so much more benefit to, to seeing somebody in person. And I'm so glad that we're kind of coming back to that as a society to be able to see in person again that show was lovely seeing all those women and faces and you know it was it was amazing yeah for sure for sure so what would you say is the best part of your job oh my gosh honestly the best part of my job is seeing and talking to moms you know three weeks later two months later I saw a few moms at the show where it's been eight nine months since I've seen them and they tell me you you saved it for me. You made all the difference. I have a mom that ended up going from uh, breastfeeding to bottle feeding, and and she still she still messages me and connects, and I helped her with increasing her milk supply and making the switch from breast to bottle, and which formula we thought would work best for her son. Um, so it's definitely it's it's so rewarding to hear that you had any kind of impact in in the life of someone else that's a hundred percent the best part of my job yeah absolutely. so holding babies is nice too yeah <laughs> yeah we were talking about that first off camera that we we get our <laughs> we get our baby fixes from all the right. that we see you know both of us having older um children so it's so nice to just to see those little faces and just give them cuddles and give them love and that's yeah right. such a special connection babies are just like so amazing. Just the babies yeah. are, right? Babies. magical. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
Um, what is one thing that you get asked? There's always like that ongoing question, that one that kind of pops up from time to time. What is, what is your ongoing thing that you get asked all the time? Um, I would say probably the most common I get asked is, isn't it supposed to hurt at first? Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the answer to that is no, it's a common misconception because for years and years, we've been telling moms, oh, six weeks, give it six weeks. It's going to hurt like crazy for six weeks and then it gets better. And it, it really isn't true. It, it shouldn't hurt at all. Yeah. You know, like it's okay for it to feel uncomfortable. It's okay for it to feel a little weird because we're not used to doing it, especially in, in our busy society, but it shouldn't hurt. There shouldn't be any kind of cold curling some fingernail squeezing pain yeah. um, yeah. that so many moms experience. So I, I always tell every mom I see, anyone you talk to, tell them, no, it shouldn't hurt. Come and see yeah. somebody right away. It's always that old wives tale, like, oh yeah, you just get used to the pain or, right. or your nipples toughen up, you know, they almost get calloused or whatever. And it's just exactly. like, it's just sort of it true. It's <laughs> It is so sort of like that. It scares new moms too, right? They they yeah. are, they're anticipating, you know, that they're going to be in pain, you know. But exactly. you know, it, it does it, it it does feel really weird. But yeah, it hundred percent should never be painful, you yeah. know. And that's with anything, you know, other than labor. Um, but with, <laughs> with most things, there shouldn't be any pain. <laughs> that's right. You don't want pain. You don't want your nipples to have to toughen up, right? No, because no. Do it without doing that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It feels like a long time when you're in pain like that yes yeah don't yeah. wait <laughs> exactly 100 percent. and what is something you wish your clients knew more about i wish they knew what to expect before having the baby mm -hmm. so i feel like so much focus and energy is put into preparing for the birth itself mm -hmm. which is fantastic i think yes we need to keep doing that but we need to add in some kind of um program to ready them for what to expect when baby's born how do you feed your baby so great you've pushed this watermelon out of your body now what yeah. right right so that's kind of my goal which is why i came up with the prenatal course that i did it focuses mostly on breastfeeding um or bottle feeding whichever you choose um but so that you're prepared before you're handed this little lump and the nurse says here just shove it on and because the nurses are fantastic, they're lovely, but they don't have the time because they have to bounce from room to room too. They don't have the time to focus on every single mom and baby. So I, I wish that there was just a little bit more education out there for moms on what to expect and how to feed baby and what what is normal and what's not. Yeah. When to seek help and when to go, oh, I think this is fine. Yeah, for sure. That's why I, you know, wholeheartedly doulas and midwives are gold, you yeah. know, to have that extra one-on-one -on -one support. And, you know, yeah. I definitely recommend to, um, anybody and everybody, if they're on the fence about it, do it because, yeah. you know, just to have that extra care. Um, and, and also people like yourself are doing the lactation consultants. And, you know, this is one thing I wish that I had done you know with all of my children because exactly. I struggled with nursing like we just tried to get the first six weeks in and, mm -hmm. and then we were happy with that and we switched to bottles because it was just like I couldn't do it anymore I threw my hands up and we were done yeah. and we were exhausted and you know you know even four years ago where, where my youngest is now like there wasn't that much out there and you know it's such a value to have you know that hands-on um help and you know assistance through that those periods because even like the first like two three weeks might be okay and then all of a sudden you just like hit a plateau and it's just like oh wait what happened right yeah yeah, yeah. or you just kind of like something gets turned or something changes and it's just yeah. like you lose it right and yeah. you're trying your best to hold it all together and you know if you have toddlers running around and you know it just you're you're pulling your hair out so yeah you know, exactly like, yeah it's just amazing to be able to have these resources and this is one of the reasons why i wanted to create the summit was to bring more light and and share and talk yeah. about these things and talk about sore nipples and talk about these things that are out there because these are real things yeah you know, we have to address them and and talk about them in normal day-to-day -day conversations and have you know these talks right exactly the it's the awareness that the awareness that needs to get out there that this is available you don't 
have to be alone. You don't have to suffer through it. And I think this region, um, I'm fairly new to the Waterloo region. We moved here just a couple of years ago. Um, but I think the midwives in this region do an amazing job at trying to get all that awareness out there. But we're all just individuals trying to get the word out. So the more we come together and, and speak as loud as we can, the, the greater reach we're going to have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. So what drives you? What motivates you? What gets you out of bed other than your children every morning? And your pets, but <laughs> what, what keeps you going? I'm not gonna lie, getting getting up in the morning knowing I'm gonna go in and see, you know, these tiny little new lights. Yeah. I, I just that helps a lot. And then knowing that there's a mom, even if it's just one in a day, there's a mom out there who may be waking up in tears that I can help. And yeah. I know I can help. There's there's no question in my mind whatever she's going through, even if she just needs somebody to listen to her and say, I understand. And, you know, give her a hug or if we're allowed soon, hopefully, just be there for her. That that gets me going in the morning. It, it, it gives me excitement to look forward to every single day. Aside from my children and my family, um, it's definitely why I started the nest because it's something um, I really feel I was I was born to do. I, I was built for um, helping moms and dads, new parents in general. Um, navigate their way through parenthood. Yeah, for sure. Wonderful. Yeah, amazing. Uh, was there anything else that you wanted to add? Anything else you wanted to mention or talk about today that came up? I think I I think you covered both of awesome. it. Yeah, I think we we got. I think I feel like we need to have you back on and maybe talk more and dive deeper into some of the subjects and maybe talk more about um, the prenatal aspect of things and and the, the preparing for for the birth because it's true. You know, we really we prepare for birth, but then we kind of forget about the. And now here's your baby. And, and now it's just like, okay, I have this hospital bag and I have all this stuff and I have, you know, this, but, but what do we do now? It's just yeah. like, you know, you kind of get the deer in the headlights look, or at least I did my first one. And so it's like, oh, okay then. So yeah. And now what do we do? Right. You know? So yeah, I think we'll, we need to have you back on and we'll dive a little bit deeper. Maybe we can do it actually an in-person interview next time and we'll hang out together and, and oh, I love that. that. So how do we get a hold of you? What's the best way for um, us to reach out to you if we want more information about your services and what you offer? Um, so I've tried to make myself kind of available and easy to find on every platform as possible. Um, so I'm on Facebook, Instagram, I've got the nest.com um, or sorry, the kwnest.com. Um, and then there's an email, there's a contact page. Um, our LinkedIn page should be going up sometime today or tomorrow, which is exciting. Yeah. Um, and then uh, WhatsApp as well. We're listed as uh, the Nest Breastfeeding and Prenatal Services on WhatsApp. So we're, we've tried to make it as easy to find us as possible. Um, and of course, any any word of mouth and, and sharing of uh, posts and whatnot is always helpful. For sure. Yeah, we'll definitely post all your information along with the interview here so that, you know, the attendees can get in touch with you if they have any questions or if they want to, you know, set up a chat or a time to talk with you. That's thank you. Lovely. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on and um, chatting with us today and sharing about what you do at The Nest. No, oh, thank you so much for having me. It was a, a real pleasure to be here and, and visiting with you again. And thank you again. Yeah, my pleasure. <laughs>